Hello class. In this video, I'd like to go over in a little bit more detail how to find those scholarly sources that your professor is requesting in your research paper. If we take a look at the assignment that she's given you, I always like to be on the lookout for the requirements for your paper listed here. So for your annotated bibliography, she asks for five scholarly sources, and scholarly is a very important word to be on the lookout for. It describes a specific type of source, meaning that it has to be an academic journal article. It cannot be a magazine or a newspaper article or something that you found online. She asks for Chicago-style um, citations, and then it has to be five to seven pages long. So we need to find some hefty articles so that you can pull out enough information to fill five to seven pages. If we take a look at some of the sample topics that she's given you, I'm noticing that a lot of them cover ancient Egypt or the Egyptians. So I'm going to start there and give you an idea of the keywords that you can pull out. So the biggest mistake that I've seen students make is copying and pasting an entire thesis statement or um, topic suggestion from a professor copying and pasting that into the databases. It's important to note that uh, you can search Google in this manner, but the databases require a little bit more finesse. So we need to pull out just the important words from whatever topic you've chosen. So if we start in our research guide on the Find Articles tab, we can scroll down and select this first database here, Art and Architecture Source. It is an EBSCO database. You might be redirected to a page where it asks you to sign in. Just input your student ID and your eight-digit birthday, and it should take you to this page. I'm going to click on Advanced Search from the very beginning because I know that I'm going to add more than one term. So for Ancient Egypt, you can see I've already done some sample searches, but I'm going to type in Ancient Egypt. And then I like to click on Advanced Search because it does give you these three search bars instead of one. Technically, you could do this all on one bar, but I like visually how it separates them here. So Ancient Egypt goes on the first line, and I'm going to do the one that relates to, um, what was it, funeral rites or the afterlife, jewelry, the afterlife, and Ancient Egypt. So I'm going to pull out these important words, jewelry, afterlife, Ancient Egypt. So afterlife and jewelry. So I have three search terms. And you can see I come up with only two articles. If I take off jewelry, I get quite a few more. So there are more articles that deals with ancient Egypt and the afterlife in general, but when you get more specific and you're talking about only the jewelry related to the afterlife in ancient Egypt, it gets much more narrow. So if you want to write in your introduction or the first couple paragraphs about what the afterlife meant to the Egyptians, this could be a good place to start with your sources. However, I want to make sure that we are only seeing the scholarly ones because that is what your professor requested. So make sure you click on this scholarly box right here. And you also want to click on full text because that limits you to the library's subscription. So that took us back down to six, which is quite a small number. If I add in jewelry here, We had two before and now we don't have any. So from here, we need to work on expanding our search slightly. So this is called, little asterisk, is called truncation. So it'll include everything that comes after the root word of Egypt, such as Egyptian. So include that. And another word for afterlife wanted to search really quickly, still no articles, afterlife, or funeral rites, or burial. So on the same line, if you can include terms that are synonyms for one another, or words that can be interchanged, they mean the same thing, separated by the word or. It's important, one, that they are on the same line, 
and that they are separated by the word or. It's a mathematical equation and you have to make sure you input it into the database the correct way. So once we've expanded our search by searching for either Egypt and afterlife or Egypt and funeral rites or Egypt and burial, in addition to jewelry, now we've come up with two articles. Now the word jewelry is also fairly specific. So if we could add a synonym for jewelry, again, make sure that you separate it with the word or again on a different line. And I'm also doing truncation here because ornament can be ornamentation or ornaments, plural. So make sure you add the little asterisk at the end to get all the um, edifications of ornaments. And let's see if that expands our search at all. So unfortunately, we still only have a small amount of articles. When this happens, I like to click on Choose Databases. And usually I would select between three and eight databases to be included in our search. But because we have such a very small number, I am going to select all. And again, I only do this in very rare instances when I have a very small result list. So I'm gonna click OK and include every single database that EBSCOhost, the giant company, provides. So I'm gonna click on Search. And now we are searching not just in art and architecture, but we're searching in every single one of the databases they provide, including their ebook collection. So you could get some entire books as well. So from one article, we jump up to 89. Now, if you started out with hundreds of results in one database, and then you included all the others, you would have thousands upon thousands of results, and that would be much too many. I only did this because we had one article. Now notice when I clicked on all the databases, our limiters got deleted. So we wanna make sure that again, we click on peer reviewed or it's scholarly, they mean the same thing. And so our result list will go down again. So peer reviewed and full text. So we have three. And if I click on databases, you can see where they're coming from. So one is from that Arc and Ar Architecture database, which we already had before. One is coming from another art database that we had, Art Full Text, and then some articles might be repeated, and one's coming from Academic Search Complete. So again, not a ton of resources, but if you use these articles in conjunction with resources that you found from other databases, such as ProQuest, Gale, you'll come up with the five sources that you need. And again, you don't have to be so specific in every single search that you do. You could just talk generally about ancient Egypt and the afterlife, and then some articles will deal more specifically with the jewelry or ornamentation that they gave their mummies. So when you find an article that you like, click on the title, and you should see a PDF full text or HTML full text attachment here. And then I always like to make sure you email it to yourself, because if you leave this up on your laptop, you will eventually be logged out of the database after a certain amount of inactivity. So you want to make sure that your search doesn't get deleted and you have to repeat it again. One way to prevent that is to email the article to yourself so it's waiting for you in your inbox and it will never be deleted. So from here, you want to make sure that you select Chicago. And I believe your professor wants the humanities version of Chicago, not author date. So make sure you select the correct citation format. It automatically includes the PDF. And all you have to do is type in your email address here. And that's how you'll find an article or how you have access to an article that you really like once you leave the database. Okay. So that's just a little bit about how we did some searching for more specific terms in EBSCOhost. Remember that you can use truncation at the end of a word to include all the iterations after the root word, Egypt, Egyptian, Egyptians, etc. And then afterlife and, sorry, or funeral rites, synonyms separated by the word or. And this is on the same line. I did mention that you could do it on the same line but I always like separating them because it just makes a little bit more sense visually. 
jewelry or ornamentation. So make sure you add your synonyms because it can have a big difference. In this database, we only went from one to three, so it didn't make a huge difference, but with some other topics that are more written about, perhaps you'll have more success. I always like to start with a difficult topic so that hopefully when you do your search, you find a lot more results. Anyways, so if you ever have any questions about how to use the database or how to maybe format your search so that you're getting the best results, make sure that you go back to the guide and on every single page in the guide or the library homepage, there's always this chat with the librarian button here. So if you have any questions about accessing the databases, how to format your search, which databases you should be using, how to pull out your keywords from your thesis statement, anything at all regarding your research paper, remember that you always have access to a librarian from this page. So if you click on this, let me just type in a sample name, Art 101, and I am signed in. So I'm notified that I have a new chat visitor. And whenever the library is open from 7.30 a.m. to 8 p.m. in the summer, librarians are signed in and we'll get this notification whenever we have a chat. So make sure you take advantage of this feature. Good luck with your papers and I look forward to hearing from some of you.